The Volvo S90 and V90 were first shown to the world in 2016, with the S90 taking the stage first at the North American Auto Show in January and the V90 at the Geneva Motor Show in March. The S90 model carried the torch for the first generation S90 and the Volvo 900 before it as the flagship car to the manufacturer. It was originally built in Torslanda, Sweden and then moved in 2017 to other global manufacturing plants. The S90 and V90 were dropped from markets around the world in late 2023, although some countries can still buy the model new at the time of this video. The S90 and V90 are built atop the SPA platform shared with the second generation XC90. There are actually three official models, the S90, V90 and V90CC, the latter named V90 Cross Country and a special edition of Ocean Race Cross Country featured similar wheel arch cladding and raised ride height to the Volvo XC70 making it more capable off-road. Volvo also sold the Cross Country with the expectation that customers would use it on unsealed roads, an attractive feature to Australians that regularly visit rural regions as well as Americans and Europeans who live in remote areas. If you are looking for a V90 model in the USA, then note that they were special order only and discontinued entirely in 2021. Dealers stocked only the S90 and V90 Cross Country, meaning finding a V90 can be quite challenging. If in Australia, the Cross Country model is also dropped from the lineup in 2021. In Europe, dealers continued on with all variants in most key sales countries, although Europeans became more restricted on specification and many made factory orders. For those comparing the S90 to other larger luxury vehicles like the Mercedes S-Class or Lexus LS, it should be noted that the S90 is a smaller overall vehicle, fitting in between most mid-size and large luxury cars. This has pros and cons, offering a flagship specification in a slightly smaller package means if you live in a city with tight parking or a home without lots of driveway space, the slightly shorter length and width could make a big difference. As an example, the current generation Lexus LS is 206 inches long against 195.4 inches in the standard S90 wheelbase. And on the long wheelbase made from 2018 onwards, it is 200 inches. Vehicle weight is also much lighter at 200 kilograms or 440 pounds lighter than the equivalent Lexus LS and Mercedes S-Class. The replacement flagship model will be all electric and named ES90. This has already begun pre-production in Zhenjiang province in China in December of 2023. It is almost certain that it will not be built in Sweden, similar to the S90 and V90 that were only built in Sweden in 2016 and part of 2017. After this production was moved to China, India and Malaysia, I meaning if you really want a model built in the Nordic nation, you'll be limited to early production models. Moving on to safety and unsurprisingly the S90 and V90 both scored a full 5 stars at Euro NCAP and awarded a top safety pick by the American IIHS. Across safety testing the Volvo scored top marks in nearly all categories and passed all tests well even if it didn't score the highest possible mark. Next up are the recalls. In March 2017 a recall was made for 2017 models that had the curtain airbag improperly fitted at the factory. In August of that same year a recall was also made for air conditioning hoses leading to a moisture buildup that could affect other electrical components. When viewing an S90 or V90 check the front seat rails have all the bolts in place as a recall in March 2019 was made due to a nut on the seat rail not being fitted at the factory. Models built after this recall should not be affected but are worth checking for peace of mind. Three separate recalls between 2019 to 2020 were made for manifolds that were deforming or melting. Cars built within the affected parts were recalled and have had the part replaced. A batch of vehicles were recalled in 2021 for faulty fuel pumps that could fail due to blowing a fuse. Finally in 2022 a recall was made for later model vehicles that were identified as having a software error that could stop the engine from starting. Next up are the common faults and a reminder to subscribe if you're enjoying our content and want more and to check out our new book at the link below. Automatic emergency braking systems were recalled in some countries and checked on regular servicing in others after reports that a software code was missing in a batch of production vehicles making the system not function. Although you won't be able to test this, ask an owner if they have experienced any problems with the system or had a dealer fix. 
a high proportion of vehicles are unaffected, so don't be surprised if they haven't had an issue or repair. Over 20% of recorded complaints on the S90 and V90 vehicles are due to electrical issues, and so spend some time checking everything from the lights, steering wheel buttons, navigation systems and seatbelt warning work before committing to a purchase if you can. Some owners reported a brake squeal that Volvo dealers attempted to fix by adjusting the backing plate or removing and refitting the hardware. This rarely resolved the issue. Owners that managed to get the brakes replaced under warranty appeared to note the issue as resolved, and so it is possible there was a problem with earlier brake suppliers that may no longer be a problem, but worth listening out for on a test drive either way. Aside from these, many owners noted that the S90 and V90 are very dependable, although servicing costs can be high, so if you're looking at one with a recent full service history from a Volvo dealer or specialist, take it as a positive buying sign. The only other note is similar to our guide on the XC90 of this generation, the 8-speed AC transmission is fitted across the range, and there were some reports of hard shifts or slow response among some owners, so check the gearbox is smooth, and shuffles between gears without a problem on a test drive. Next up are the engines, and the range is limited to petrol and diesel engines with four cylinders only, and a hybrid model. We'll start with the diesel. The four cylinder turbocharged diesel was sold as either a single or twin turbo diesel badge D3 for single turbo models, and D4 and D5 for the twin turbo. Markets across the world were limited to which variants they were offered, but most received a higher power D5 and a single turbo option. Some were offered all power output. The range starts at 148 brake horsepower in the D3, then moves up to 187 brake horsepower in the D4, and 232 brake horsepower in the D5. These will likely carry the badge power pulse for most buyers. Fuel economy is officially quoted at between 64.2 to 43.5 miles per gallon, or 4.4 to 6.49 litres per 100 kilometres. The large variation is partly due to the official testing cycle changing from NEDC to the newer WLTP system during the vehicle's production. Common problems include a burst power pulse pipe on models equipped with the high pressure compressed air system that helps generate low down power. This can make the engine feel like it has turbo lag the purpose of the power pulse system is to give a near instant response to increases in throttle, and so if you test drive a car that takes time to build up boost, this is likely the culprit. Aside from that, the diesel is considered reliable as long as it is serviced on time. We found rare complaints of turbo failure and injectors needing to be repaired or replaced. Onto the petrol engines, and these are either offered as a single turbo engine in T4 and T5 models, or a turbocharged and supercharged engine in the T6. From there, the most powerful model is the plug-in hybrid badge T8 twin engine, T8 recharge, or simply recharge, depending on the year and your home market. Power starts at 187 brake horsepower in the T4, and is boosted to either 246 or 251 brake horsepower, again depending on where you are in the world. The T6 offers 316 brake horsepower, and then the T8 hybrid has a variety of outputs, which I'll cover in a moment. Non-hybrid models have fuel economy range of 36 to 39.5 miles per gallon on the newer WLTP system, that's 7.85 to 7.15 litres per 100 kilometres. Initially, the T8 will either have a combined figure of 390 to 402 brake horsepower, depending on your market, and then steps up in 2022, to 450 brake horsepower when the battery is increased in size from 11.6 to 18.6 kilowatt hours. Electric range on these models ranges from 28 miles on earlier cars to 55 miles on the 2022 model onwards. That's 45 to 89 kilometers. Fuel economy ranges widely with official figures over 100 miles per gallon. However, this is based on how often you charge. Expect efficiency to increase by 25% or more over the regular petrol range and you shouldn't be disappointed. Cooling problems related to failed pipes and then oil leaks on earlier models were the most common reports we could find. High oil consumption was related to a piston ring fault that should have been resolved under warranty or repaired by now. Newer models don't appear to suffer this issue, but make sure to listen out on a test drive for any squealing noises if driving a T6 or T8 model as this will likely be the supercharger belt in need of replacement. 
The hybrid system seems reliable, although one fault we did find from owners was a failure of the battery pack, or ERAD as the system is termed. If you notice hesitation when pulling away from a stop, or any clunking from the rear that is not identified as a suspension fault, then it is strongly suggested to have the car inspected by someone with experience of hybrid powertrains before buying. This can be a very expensive repair, later models with revised battery packs seem less affected than earlier models. For Alpix we'd look for a V90 fitted with a single turbo diesel on a lower budget and on a top end the S90 either in inscription or R design specification. Next up though why not check out the Volvo XC90 or if you are tempted by an earlier Volvo see our video on the V70 and XC70 or the XC60. Until next time all the best with your car search.